All right, heading into 2024, Tesla faces several risks. Let's dive into those with longtime Tesla investor Ross Gerber, Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management CEO. Ross, always nice to get some time with you as well here. We were just talking um, with a prior guest on, on the risk to Tesla, their financials, their stock price because of, of some of the source, just the views he has taken in terms on social issues. How concerned are you that next year his views start to hurt the demand and, and hurt the stock price of Tesla? Well, first off, shout out to George. You know, I read his his Tesla and his work. You know, he's a great analyst and, and a great uh, person to follow uh, if you're looking for Tesla data. And and I think his point about earnings being the driver of stock prices is ultimately what's going to determine Tesla's success next year. So the fact that Elon has you know become, I, and I don't think it's equally. Uh, a similar controversy of smoking weed on Joe Rogan to making severely anti-Semitic remarks. You know, these are different levels of or, or telling everybody to f off. You know, so so I think if Musk's behavior continues to get more and more extreme, that is a risk to Tesla sales. But the bottom line, as George pointed out, it's the best vehicle on the road. It's the best value on the road. You know, so consumers literally have to buy a lesser car because they don't like Elon. And so I don't know if consumers are going to do that or not. I know certain consumers are for sure, but there might be many others that just simply want the best car. Yeah, balancing whether you want to continue to buy from a figure that perhaps goes increasingly divisive versus just saying, all right, I'm able to just kind of take the juice and ultimately just keep moving and be comfortable with my car purchase, at least at well, this point in time. Well, it's, you know, Tesla is Tesla and Elon is Elon. And I think the best thing Tesla can do is continue to differentiate its brand, you know, as Tesla. And Haven't that's they why intertwined I'm so much of that so brand much. with Elon, though? Well, it's hard. You know, it's really hard because Elon is basically the face of the brand and the voice of the brand. And they've been, you know, if you notice on Twitter, um, Tesla has been tweeting more as Tesla. Um, they've been defending themselves more. We've seen more attempts at advertising. And I think if Tesla goes full in on advertising and continues, you know, to sort of build its brand, Elon's effect will be less and less damaging to Tesla overall. But the bottom line is you can't diminish the effect of the damage that he's caused. Ross, let's talk some numbers here because we, we were showing in a, in a prior segment how the earnings estimates for next year for Tesla have continued to fall really throughout the year, but most notably, at least according to Yahoo Finance data, over the past 90 days. Can this stock continue to work higher next year if earnings estimates continue to come down and Tesla does have some product miscues? Well, I don't know about product miscues. I mean, they're going to struggle to put Cybertrucks out next year, but that's expected. In my mind, it's a launch year and it's an incredible new technology and product. Um, that said, I like that they've lowered expectations this much because it gives Tesla opportunity to beat. So if they can actually increase margins by lowering costs and or um, not have to lower prices um, because demand picks up, maybe we get lower interest rates and maybe Tesla beats earnings over the course of the year. And I think that's what a lot of the analysts who have price targets at 300 or 350 are thinking that Tesla would might earn closer to $5 than, let's say, the less than $4 that's expected. And if that's the case, a $300 price target does look reasonable for Tesla. But right now, you know, $4 is, you know, where I'm at. And, you know, so Tesla's a fully valued stock. But, you know, we're long-term investors. So, you know, we're very bullish on Tesla's long term. And it is an AI company. I, it's absurd to, to not you know, give it credit for where it is. An AI company at the multiple of NVIDIA, at the multiple of, what, what's the comparison? Well, NVIDIA is a hardware company, so they're in a particularly good spot right now because everybody needs what NVIDIA makes, and there is no, you know, AI without NVIDIA at this moment, um, where Tesla has the first application that's pure AI that actually helps society. So large language models are wonderful, and, and they're just at the, you know, beginning stages of its potential, but but Tesla full self-driving has been going on for years and it's pretty close to driving. So, you know, we've got a real world AI driving car. I don't know what else you want. I mean, it, it sees in real time what's happening on the road and makes adjustments and drives for you. So it's not perfect yet, but it's improved dramatically over the last year. And once again, I think it will get solved. It's just how much time we're at a point where the technology has gotten so far that the incremental increases in ability are harder and harder. But yet, you know, nobody wants any accidents in a Tesla, you know, full self-driving. So that expectation is extremely hard to meet.
All right, uh, Ross, next time we're just going to scrap the conversation. We're just going to have a jam session. I see all those yeah. Les Gibsons in the back. Great stuff here. Ross Gerber, Gerber Kawasaki, Wealth and Investment Management CEO. Thanks so much, Ross. Yeah, thanks for having me. Have a great New Year's. Happy New Year to you, too.